Thank you, Gabriel, for the wonderful introduction, and thank you, TEDx8, for this wonderful opportunity. So, for the past three days and backstage, I was thinking, how do I introduce this? And I got nothing, so just give a high five to your neighbor. Thank you. <laughs> okay. So as a child, I've always wanted to stand before a wonderful audience and share my ideas with them. Most people during arguments think my ideas can be radical, but that is just who I am. So today I'm going to talk to you about how there is no need to take offense because language in itself is powerless. Good morning, guys. Wait, are there also females here? Why is she using guys to represent everyone? So I said, good morning, gentlemen and ladies. Good morning. Wait, isn't it normally ladies and gentlemen? Why has she interchanged the positions? And wait, there are also other genders over here she's not representing. So, for a safe aside, I said, good morning, everyone. Now, bear with the drama. It is just the language. I had to find neutral words in order not to establish any hierarchical notion, misrepresent, or leave out any social group in the society. In simple terms, I do not want to offend anyone with my choice of words. According to the Marian West Text Dictionary, Language are the words, their pronunciation, the methods of combining them used and understood by a community. You agree with me that it is quite evident how language has impacted our daily lives. And there have been many concerns raised about how certain words are inappropriate and offensive to use. Due to this, people have proposed the inclusion of some neutral words in our language. So I considered, how can we communicate without offending each other with our words? <coughs> True or might, that's the only way I thought of. My favorite author, Eric Arthur Blair, commonly known as George Orwell, who wrote 1984 and Animal Farm, once said, but if thoughts corrupt language, the language corrupts thoughts. All right, the chicken and egg saga about who came earlier, you would agree with me that thoughts comes before language. In contrast, Angela Carter, an English novelist who wrote The Bloody Chamber, also said, language is an instrument of domination and liberation. These two quotes seem parallel but there is a level of commonality between them. Every instrument performs based on the instructions it receives from its instructor. We produce thoughts, the thoughts produce language, and language is used to either dominate or liberate. At the end of the cycle, you and I give that power to language, which it seems to have. I came up with some everyday words which people take offense in due to their asymmetrical position in our vernacular. Words such as husband and wife, he and she, sir or madame, sons and daughters, boys and girls, king and queen. Some feminists take offense that the positioning of the male-related nouns before the female-related nouns delegates power to men over women. And some men also take offense in how we place ladies before gentlemen, mom and dad, because to them it emphasizes that women are more special than the men. We mostly say black and white as compared to white and black. So I ask, would that then insinuate that black people have dominance over white people? Have we ever considered that 
The positions of these nouns has to do with their phonetic and metrical properties and none to do with delegating power, misrepresenting or leaving out any social group in the society. Say these words out loud in your head. Men and women, women and men, ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies. And pick whatever sounds intuitively better to you. These words can be considered as frozen binomials because their positions are just not interchangeable and it definitely has nothing to do with delegating power. What boggles my mind is the word history, which originally means inquiry. People take offense that the word history stands out from the masculine pronoun his. And so we now have her story. But wait, due to the gender transitions over the years, we no longer have male or female. We have about 58 genders more. So I ask, we would then have them story? Language cannot dehumanize, subtract, or add value to a person on its own. Because you and I hold that power that language seems to have. Wow. I know you might be wondering, because there has been a lot of talks around about how Language shapes the way we think. But in our current society, people seem to have developed a lot of sensitivity as to how certain words are implied. And so this proposition of the neutral words seems to be rising up. But I ask, how far can we go with devising a language which offends no one? Personally, if I had to re-choose my words, restructure my essays, my written tax, just not to offend the other party, I find that quite oh, as an offense because I don't want to go through that hassle. And humans, we are insatiable. We are diverse people with diverse values and diverse feelings, and offense is bound to happen one way or the other. Unless we all have our own customized dictionary full of our preferred word usage. So then, if I want to speak to you, I just study your dictionary and then our combo will be without any offensive word. If we restrict language so that every Tom, Dick and Harry will be represented and feel equally treated, our society will just remain unproductive because the human's preferences is wide and varied. But wait, language in itself has no power or meaning. It is rather the emotions you and I attach to it. We give it its meaning. Words only hold the power we imbue them with. Think about it.